Over the years, I've worked with multiple podcast hosts to get their shows into the top 1%. One of the big aspects that we noticed in doing so is that adding video really levels up your podcast by a huge margin. Video is a ton of work especially if you want to do a high quality multi-cam production. And this is even possible with remote videos. However, that's for another video. Today in this video, I wanna show you how you can get in podcast edit like the one that you see here on screen with multiple angles. So you have one angle for both people and then one angle that is specifically highlighting one of the individual people or even four, five or six cameras. All of that is possible very easily and very swiftly with a plugin that is called AutoCut. I wanna mention that AutoCut is actually not the only Premiere Pro plugin that can do these things. There are a couple of others on the market as well and I will feature those in future videos to basically compare and see which ones might be the best fit for you. So if you're looking for those, I will have links in the description below. And obviously I will also have a link to AutoCut directly so that you can check that out, start your trial, see if the features are a great fit for you. And then if you end up signing up through my link, I will get a small commission as an affiliate of AutoCut. Now though, let's jump in and I will show you how you can get this type of a podcast edit done within minutes, which usually would take multiple hours, especially if the conversations are a little bit longer. Now, the first thing that you have to do to get this working is to create a sequence where you have all of the video tracks as well as the individual speaker tracks available. Now here you can see, we actually have a couple of clips on the first and the second camera, and then basically one continuous clip on the third camera. This is obviously because some of these cameras have 30 minute record time limits. So that's why we have to cut based on that or restart those angles. And then down here, you see we have the audio and this is from the Zoom F6. And that is a continuous recording. And we also had a bit of an issue right here, which we luckily were able to fix by having lavaliers on the speakers as well as the microphones for podcasting that they have in their hands. This here is now a synchronized sequence. And if you wanna learn more about how to synchronize a sequence like this with different features that are available like timecode or the audio synchronization, then let me know in the comment section. I will make a video about that in the future. Once you do have a synchronized sequence where you have the different angles on these different layers, and as you can see, now we have this layer right here. So that's the first layer. Then we have the second layer, which is focused on Nicole right there. And then we have a third layer that is the angle that is focused on our guest in this case. And then once you have this sequence all set up and all synchronized, then you can go up into the project manager and basically drag this over the new icon and this way you get a new sequence based on the settings of the parent sequence with one long track for that specific sequence that you just dragged into it. Now, once you have that, we have to prepare the individual angles for AutoCut to be able to work on them individually. To do this, in this case with a multi-cam sequence, I would first enable the multi-cam feature here directly on the clip. So enable the multi-cam feature, and then I would unlink these from each other so that audio and video is unlinked. Doing this helps me now to work individually with the audio and the video tracks in a multi-cam fashion. Now I can duplicate this track twice because we have three different angles and I wanna select those. And then I can also duplicate the audio track a second time so that this one actually also is able to have the track for track one and then the track for track two. Now I can right click on the track one for the audio and go into multi-cam. And in this case, I wanna have it on camera one. And then for the second audio clip, I want it to be on camera two. In this case, that would select the second track for the audio. Now those are separated and I can do the same thing for the multi-cam sequence up top. Again, on the first one, I don't really have to do the right click because you will see it already has camera one selected. And then we go up to the second track, select camera two, and then the third track, and we have camera three. Now you can see the duplication markers are all gone. 
And when I basically enable and disable these tracks, you can see the first track again has both of them. Then we have the focused on Nicole, and then we have the second one focused on Natalie. Now, with this preparation, you're ready to go and basically off to the races. There's one particular reason why I do this type of setup, which will come out in a moment, because this actually helps me to be able to later on do a little bit more flexible changes if I want to do those manually. Now though, we go up into the menu for auto cut. And if you don't have this already open, you can go to the window extensions and then there you will find the auto cut after having installed it from the website, download it from there, run the installer and then restart Premiere Pro. Then you will find it right here in extensions, auto cut. Now here you can see all the different features that they have developed. And in this video, as I mentioned, we are focusing on the AutoCut podcast. Here, you now have to basically align the different tracks with what's in them or tell the program what's in them. Now, the naming of the speakers is technically not necessary, but it makes the process much, much easier. In our case, audio track number one is Nicole and then audio track number two is Natalie. Now with these names down, you could assign them to different audio tracks. So whichever it is, you would have to select there. And then you can also add more if you do have more speakers. And now we can go down to the camera angles and there we also have to select which angle shows which people. And in this case, it's not technically about which are shown, but for which active speaker do you want to have this track activate? So on this one, on track number one, we have all of the speakers because that's our main camera. Track number two shows mainly Nicole. And then track number three shows mainly our guest, Natalie. With this setup, we can scroll further down and now we can choose what type of a pacing do we want for camera switches. Now, I personally noticed that I actually like when they're either a little bit energetic or even hyperactive. The settings here are basically just changing the settings that you see right here on the screen. So how fast are these going to cut? What is the minimum duration or the maximum duration for one given track to stay active? In this one on energetic, it's three seconds for the minimum and then a maximum of 20 seconds. And I find that Actually, sometimes it is quite helpful to have a very short minimum so that the speakers also can get highlighted quickly if they are just for a second making a reaction. So that's why I like the energetic one. And also 20 seconds to stay on one speaker is usually enough if you want to keep the energy high and it should actually switch between, for example, the individual speaker and the main camera for both speakers rather often. So at least every 20 seconds. Now, what we also have is either a disable or remove setting for what is going to happen with the segments that are not being used. Now, I choose remove because this will, again, help me later on combine all of this again to be able to easily edit this with the multi-track or multi-cam feature. And that's basically it. We now hit the podcast ready button and it will do its magic and now go through the whole podcast and edit it for us. Now, during this time, the AutoCut interface specifically tells us not to do anything inside of Premiere Pro because of the way that these types of plugins interact with Premiere Pro. That is the safest way to go about. Now, what it is doing in the background for the most part, it is going to encode the audio so that it's workable for the audio recognition, which speaker is active at which time based on volume. And that is just my estimation. And based on that, it basically creates a map of when to cut. And then it does all of these cuts for you. So one of the longest processes is actually that encoding in the beginning, especially if you have a very long podcast episode. In this case, I think it's like one and a half hours, something like that. But I will let you know how long this took during the edit by showing you the number right here in minutes. But now I'm going to fast forward through that process. And here we go. You have a process complete notification and technically you could jump straight to the automated captions for the whole thing, which we are not going to do in this one. 
But you can see, if I open this sync map fully up, you can see all of these cuts that it did for us. And you can also see that it actually does a lot of these high speed three second cutaways. There you have our main speaker in this moment, the guest. And as this is going forward, then it jumps over to the main camera for a couple of seconds. But she continues speaking, and depending on how you like this, it is best to probably do this on a smaller, let's say 15 minute segment of your podcast to be able to judge how you would like this to be. So what's your minimum duration for a shot and also what's your maximum duration for a shot. Then all of this here is on your timeline ready to edit. But what I personally actually also like to do is then recombine my multicam sequence. Meaning I take all of these shots and I hold shift while I do this and I drag them down to the first track and then I take the second row of all of the other shots and again I drag all of them down to the lowest layer. Now I have all of them here on one smooth timeline with all of the edits that were done by the AI. And this now is the trick why I use a multi-cam sequence to begin with. Because with that, I can actually now go through and actually do a manual edit if I wanted to do that, if I don't trust all of this processing, or if you want to just make sure that you have everything out that needs to be out and so on. I personally, like or prefer to have a manual edit at least once. But I honestly have to say that this type of plugin changes the game completely in doing these types of cuts. And oftentimes they actually do much more cuts than if I were to do the manual editing. And that makes the show usually much more engaging. So in this case, as you can see, we have our guest, then we have the main camera, and for example, if I wanted to have the main camera for a little bit longer, I could just go in here, hold command on a Mac and then drag this out to be a little bit more. So that's why I really like the use of the multicam because now I can adjust these clips very, very easily. If I notice that, for example, on this clip right here, I don't want this to be on our speaker, I want it to be on the main person, then I can go in and change the angle, in this case with a shortcut set up to do that, or I right click and then selecting camera one. Because as you can see here, we have access to these three cameras through the help of this multi-cam sequence. I could even technically force the angle to our host instead of the guest. All of this is possible because of the use of the multicam feature bundled together with the auto cut podcast editing. And as I mentioned, this really changes the game in how fast you can edit podcasts and don't have to do all of these cuts and camera switches completely manually. Whenever we edit podcasts, this type of plugin is an absolute game changer and cuts down on the hours spent editing significantly. I would argue probably around 50% less time spent on editing a full on one hour podcast. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below. If you wanna check out AutoCut, we have a special link in the description where you actually can get a bit of a discount. And of course, you can just start a trial and see for yourself if this plugin is the right fit for you. Now, with all that said, I hope you speed up your podcast edit with AutoCut. I'll see you in another video.